Number 45. Twin skaters approach one another as shown in figure 10.39 and lock hands. Letter A. Calculate their final angular velocity given each had an initial speed of 2.5 meters per second relative to the ice. Uh, each has a mass of 70 kilograms and each has a center of mass located 0.8 meters from their locked hands. You may approximate their moments of inertia to be that of point masses at this radius. All right. Um, so the picture's up here. I, I just drew another simplified picture. Here's where they lock hands. Okay, you got two objects, one moving with a velocity that way, the other with a velocity that, that way. Come on, there we go. And um, they're both located 0.8 meters away from the point at which they lock hands. They have the same masses and the same velocities. So we are asked to uh, calculate final angular velocity. So in order to do so, we have to, uh, in order, we basically have to take initial values and translate them into final values. Um, that being the case, we usually think about conservation principles. Now the principle uh, of, the conservation principle here is actually going to be the conservation of angular momentum. All right. And the trick uh, to this, I think I discussed it in number 43 more in detail. But basically, uh, if we're looking at this, I'm going to take the point just infinitesimally small right before they actually lock hands. That point just before they lock hands. So if I take that point to be infinitesimally small, basically I'm looking at this as like the very, 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 very beginning of when they start to rotate about a common axis here and they rotate uh, in this way. Okay, so um, uh, given that, all right, I can then say that the angular momentum initially should equal the angular momentum finally. Okay, um, now uh, again, there are two pieces separated initially and then they come together, right, because they're going to be holding hands. So now I have the initial angular momentum of, let's say, you know, person A plus the initial angular momentum of person B. And that'll equal the final angular momentum of both person A and B. All right. So it doesn't matter who A, B is, obviously. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on the linear, uh, on the angular velocity. Uh, why do I say angular velocity? Angular momentum. Um, and remember, angular momentum is equal to moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity. So that's going to be the uh, moment of inertia for uh, skater A multiplied by the angular velocity of skater A plus the moment of inertia for skater B, angular velocity of skater B, and then the moment of inertia of the total system AB times then the final angular velocity of A and B. This is what we're after. Solve it for that, just get it out of the way, okay? So omega F is gonna be equal to IA, omega A plus IB, IB, omega B, all over I. A, B. So now we have to expand on these things, right? They told us to take uh, their moments of inertia to be that of point masses at the, you know, at this radius. So it's basically approximated by the hoop about a cylinder axis, okay? So the final value is going to be now the mass of A times the radius of A squared times then the angular uh, velocity of A, but here's the thing. They didn't tell us angular velocities initially, right? They gave us initial linear speeds. So you have to think, well, how can I get rid of this? How does angular velocity relate to linear velocity? Oh, right. It relates via this equation. Okay, so I can solve this for omega, and that means that it's the tangential velocity over R. So I can plug this in for omega, okay, in both places for A and B. So now this becomes the tangential velocity for um, player um, A, all right, player, oops, player A, all divided by then the, uh, what do we got here? The radius, right, of player A, RA, and now that's gonna be equal to then the moment of inertia for B, so that's MB, R, B squared, multiplied then by uh, VT, B, over RB, okay? And that all divided by now the total system moment of inertia. So to get the total system moment um, of inertia here, um, we just basically take these two and then add them together, right? So now it's going to be MARA squared plus MBRB squared. 
Okay. And I think we should have everything we need. Um, yeah, all we should, all we really need to do is just plug everything in. Um, when we're talking about these tangential values, just keep them both uh, the same sign, keep them both positive. Okay. We're talking about rotational motion. So the, this, you know, this arrow pointing this way, don't plug in a positive for this and a negative for this. Uh, because the whole top will cancel and all of a sudden you're going to get the answer of zero as the final angular velocity. But you know that that can't be the case. I mean, the nature of this problem, you know that they're going to rotate together with some angular velocity. Um, and that's because these basically are tangential velocities, don't include the sign. All right, just if they're, if they're pointing, since they're on opposite sides of this rotational circle over here, you know, this tangential velocity uh, reinforces this tangential velocity, right? They're both going to cause this circle to rotate around clockwise, given the directions I've, I've given. Um, so anyway, let's just, uh, you know, plug this all in. I mean, basically, right, since these two are identical, we can just solve for one and then multiply it by two, right? I'm just adding the same thing to each other. So you can do this a couple of ways. Um, so I'm, I'm actually just going to multiply by two just to save a little, uh, save a little, uh, energy left in my hand to finish this problem. So the mass is going to be 70 kilograms multiplied by the radius of 0.8 and that's squared. I'm not putting in all the zeros either, um, times then the tangential velocity of 2.5 all divided by the, the radius again of 0.8. So I could have simplified that. I could have gotten rid of one. This whole thing then multiplied by two all divided by now. The this value plus itself again, right? Well, not not the whole, the, but this value uh, plus itself again. So I'm just going to do 70 times 0 0.8 squared times 2 again, right? So times 2 times 2, we can actually just get rid of the 2s. And now we have that the final value, I'll put it over here on the, on the right-hand side. The 70s will cancel, right? So, I mean, if you notice a lot of them, I'm not even looking, but if you notice a lot of these things are going to uh, are going to cancel here, okay? So it's basically just whatever that works out to be. So this is going to be uh, 2.5 over 0.8, and we get 3.13 or so, okay? So we get 3.13, and that is radians per second. And that will be the answer there, okay? All right, so that takes care of that. That is for letter, um, what is that? Letter A, right? Okay, so now let's erase all of this. Okay, now what we're going to do is going to move on to uh, part B. Okay, just give me one second. So part B is now, I'll leave that other equation up. So this is now going to be uh, part, part B. <clears throat> It says compare the initial kinetic energy to the final. So the initial kinetic energy, right, KEI, realize that there's two skaters moving independently. So it's basically the kinetic energy of skater A plus the kinetic energy of skater B. All right, I don't know why I put a two, but that should be a B. So this would be one half times the mass of A times the velocity of A squared plus one half times the mass of B times the velocity of B squared. You know, you might, these are moving in opposite directions. However, um, you know, when you plug in a negative, let's say this is B, when you plug in a negative for that, um, it doesn't, you know, it's squared, so it becomes positive, okay? So don't, you know, um, in this case, we can just take one of them again and multiply it by two. In other words, if I take this and multiply it by two, I can get rid of the half, right? So really, this just works out to be mass because the masses are the same, and so are the velocities, basically. So it's just mv squared, okay? This will be then 70 times 70 times uh, 2.5 squared. And what do we get here? So 2.5 squared times 70. And we get a value of about uh, 438 or so. So 438. So that's going to be kei is equal to 438 joules. Okay, great. So that takes care of one part to part B. Let's just move that answer over here. So this is for part B. And now let's take a look at the final value. So remember now the final value is just going to, now this body, the system is rotating. Okay, so the kinetic energy of the uh, final state 
is just going to be found by using this rotational uh, kinetic energy formula. So we have the kinetic energy of rotation is equal to one half multiplied by the total system's moment of inertia, so that's AB, and then multiplied by the angular velocity of AB squared. We found the angular velocity of AB before, that's the whole point of part A. So this is the kinetic energy of rotation is now one half multiplied now by um, my moment of inertia for A and B. Now remember the moments are going to be the same, they're identical. Okay, they have the same masses and they're the same distance away. So basically I can just take the mass of one of them times the radius of one of them and then times that whole thing by two. Okay, um, and then multiply it by omega AB squared, which is the final value essentially. I can get rid of the half here with the two, that's fine. And then the kinetic energy of rotation is simply going to be M A R A two squared, excuse me, times omega a b squared. So now we can just plug it all in. And what do we have? So we have 70 kilograms multiplied by the radius of 0.8 squared, multiplied by then the 3.13 squared. So the kinetic energy after, which is the same as the kinetic energy of rotation, 70 times 0.8 squared times 3.13 squared. So about, again, it's just about four, four, probably because of my rounding, I get about 439, so 439 joules. If I use the more exact value instead of 313, what was it, 3.125, it should have come out exact. So instead of using the 313, guys, just go back and use the 3.125 in your answer, and then it comes out basically exactly the same. All right, so eight, I'm rounding again, joules, there we go, voila. And remember this is gonna be three point, hold on one second, the value down here is gonna be 3.125. The, the answer is rounded because of three six figs over there. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. See you in the next problem. Take care.